our fifth and final session today. Um, I'm happy everybody's making friends, but sit down. <laughs> All right, again, my name is Bonnie Fry Um I'm here to introduce our last tranche of speakers. You may see in your programs that um, Congressman Jim McDermott is going to send some words. Surprise, surprise, we had technical difficulties. So we're going to celebrate the people who are actually here in person and give them more time. <laughs> Um, so first I'm going to introduce Patrick Leslie, he was one of the co-organizers of this conference. He has worked incredibly hard on this, um, and has also, most importantly, been the man behind the squeaky horn today. <laughs> and he's going to tell us uh, real quick about polling and public perceptions. Thank you, thank you Bonnie. Good afternoon every again everyone, my name is Patrick Leslie. And Bonnie, I'm glad you used the word tranche. I'm actually a financial guy, and um, so I'm a financial analyst with Puget Sound Energy, working on power plant acquisitions. As such, I tend to be somewhat of a numbers guy. When I began getting involved with Carbon Washington, and we began looking at whether we could do a ballot initiative in the state, one of the things that I was most hung up on was how do we know if people would support this? Do we have any sense that this would fly at all with voters? So I, and especially when you're looking at launching into a very expensive and, uh, campaign and a very bloody battle, you want to make sure that you have at least a shred of hope. So I began looking at what polls existed on climate policy and, and specifically carbon taxes. And I'll get to that in a minute. But the reason I think this is so important, that polling is so important, is that to be honest, what we all think in this room doesn't really matter. We could come up with the best carbon pricing policy ever. And if it doesn't resonate, if the messages and the policy doesn't resonate with people's values, we will fail. If you still aren't convinced, consider the success of Proposition 23 in California. That was the dirty energy proposition that California voters destroyed in the polls. 61% no, 39% yes. The, the, the defeat of, of Prop 23 in California was a huge victory for clean air, for clean energy, and for climate policy. In fact, no on 23 received more votes than anything else on the California ballot. And the group that put together that campaign, they came out with a great document summarizing how the campaign unfolded, what worked, and what didn't. And in, the, in their four key findings, one of them was the importance of research. And this is what they said. They said the no campaign Oh. <laughs> the no campaign. <laughs> so the no campaign, this is what they wrote. The no campaign was research based. We did extensive and ongoing research on voter attitudes in which messengers they trusted. This is what messengers the people trusted. And actually, by the way, that turned out to be the American Lung Association, number one, firefighters, number two, followed by clean tech companies, number three. At one point, this campaign was doing nightly polling to gauge the effectiveness of their campaign. And I think this is one of the reasons they were so successful. That's not cheap to do that, but it's very effective. So I'd like to launch into some of the polls. I'm going to jump back. Some of the things I'm going to show, at least in the beginning, are not very encouraging. Mm -hmm. But I, I encourage you not to get discouraged because it's just, we have to understand the political landscape from which we are working. We have to understand what mainstream Washingtonians think, and we have to understand what mainstream Americans think. If we don't understand that, we're not going to succeed with any of this type of policy. Personal worry. This is a Gallup poll. The question was, how much do you personally worry about global warming? From about 1989 to the present, it's averaged about 60% in the last two years. It's in the low 50s. I think there's a lot of explanations for this. The one that, that I, my personal theory is people can only carry so much worry around with them. And people's worry buckets are full right now. And global warming is just, it's, it's falling out of the bucket. Yeah. I think that will change. Causation of our temperature changes due to man-made or natural causes. A decreasing trend in people that think that global warming is caused due to man. This is a little bit frightening. But I think, again, this will reverse as people care about it more. These are U.S. numbers, right? Just U.S. numbers. U.S. wide. So this is mainstream America. This is not this room. This is not Seattle. No. Seriousness and thinking about what is said in the news, is the seriousness of global warming generally exaggerated, generally correct, or generally underestimated? 
I think the most important trend here is that people believe that what they're hearing in the news about global warming is there's an increasing trend of people thinking it's exaggerated. It sort of ties into what Cliff Mass was talking about this morning. I think we need to be very careful of exaggeration. Declining concern. Do you think that global warming will pose a serious threat to you or your way of life in your lifetime? An increasing trend of people who don't think it's a problem will be a problem for them in their life or their lifetime. This is very concerning to me. Mm -hmm. Do they supply cost pack demographics on that? Uh, I don't know. I'm not an expert in this field, I'll warn you, I'm more of an enthusiast. So. <laughs> and finally, the last bit of bad news is that global warming, sorry for the quality of these, I just pulled it right from the reports, but global warming ranks last in, in American priorities. The good news I see out of this chart is that people still care about energy and they still care about the environment. So any sort of carbon pricing policy needs to be more framed as an energy policy and an environmental policy, which it basically is. When you ask people about energy policy, they're for everything. And this is just one poll, and polling is just is not a, a, a science, it's more of an art, I would say. But if you say, should we require utilities to get more renewable energy? 87% of people say yes. Tougher energy efficiency standards, slam dunk. If you just say, should we limit CO2 and other greenhouse gases? 66% of people in this poll said yes. So now let's talk a little bit about carbon taxes. There's not much research about polling on carbon taxes or direct carbon pricing. This is one poll that I, I think was the most interesting and, and seemingly the most credible. It took place in August of 2009. This is a bit of a corollary to some of the previous polling you saw, but I think the highlight here is that people seem to just love renewable energy, so keep that in mind. If you said, should we reduce carbon emissions, linked with climate change wasn't as popular if you just said should we reduce carbon emissions. If you ask voters what do you know about a carbon tax, the vast majority said I don't know anything. Uh, if you ask people even if they don't know what a carbon tax is, tell me your gut reaction, most people say mm, I'm not sure or pretty negative. <laughs> Only 4% of people were strongly positive. That's a bit discouraging, but when you read this statement, and I'd like to read this statement because I think it's a, carbon, it's a great way to describe carbon tax, and this is what they read when they polled people, they said, this plan would put a tax on carbon emissions so that the cost of carbon pollution is reflected in the price of energy. While there would not be a specific cap or limit on carbon emissions, the tax would be set at a level so that it acts as an incentive for companies to reduce their carbon emissions, improve the efficiency of their fossil fuel use, and also develop new technologies and alternative energies. A carbon tax approach would also create incentives for consumers to use energy more efficiently. Individuals and households would receive tax refunds to offset the impact of a carbon tax. And boom, 57% of people now like a carbon tax. I think we read a statement that said a carbon tax is going to make everything more expensive, you're going to lose your job, and it will send America into a tailspin. response. I think this puts a carbon tax in a fairly rosy light. And I think it's a, you know, obviously it seemed to be an effective way to describe it. And finally, comparing an informed, they, when they both informed people who were being polled about how cap and trade works versus how carbon tax works, in this poll, 58% of people favored carbon tax, 27% cap and trade. So that's encouraging to me. That may be my only nugget of encouraging uh, content in this presentation. This was also interesting. Who are the credible messengers? It turned out to be scientists, the wind power industry, environmental leaders, leading economists, Barack Obama. After that, it seemed to be uh -huh. a waterfall. And below the coal and oil industry falls a member of Congress. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of sad. So take from that what you will.